Okay, apologies for that interruption. Um, it turned out that I ran out of space on my hard drive when I was making that video. <clears throat> I probably shouldn't make 50 minute long uh, lecture videos anyway, so we're just gonna make this one relatively short. I'll pick up where I left off. Um, so the main idea with language preservation efforts or the goal basically is to get young people motivated to learn the language. Um, Cause as I mentioned before, if young people are not learning it and it's just old people who can speak it, the old people will keep getting older and eventually the language will fade away. Um, so you have to kind of enable the language to be renewed um, so that young people uh, learn how to speak it. And then they also teach their children how to speak it ideally natively um, so they can have that rich native speaker uh, knowledge of the language. Um, so the goal um, as linguists is to kind of spread the word about the language um, through language descriptions and educational programs um, so that new people want to become fluent speakers of the language and it often um, helps to kind of tie it into um, culture and identity there uh, too so that people think of um, learning a language as part of you know who they are and part of um, the, uh, the culture in which they're um, a member uh, to kind of help motivate keeping that culture and language going uh, in a unique way in the world. Uh, so I'll mention in passing the linguists at the University of Calgary work on um, endangered Aboriginal languages like uh, Blackfoot and Tsutuna, uh, both of which are spoken um, in the neighborhood of the city of Calgary. Um, and we actually had a student as well uh, who went up to the Northwest Territories, this is a few years ago, uh, and worked on a language called Dog Rib. Uh, which is spoken up um, close to Yellowknife. Uh, so uh, yeah, there's lots of work to be done, uh, not a whole lot of time in which to do it. But just to end on a positive note, I will mention that it is possible to have success in this domain. Um, kind of a classic example of this is the language of modern Hebrew. Uh, so uh, Hebrew for a very long time was uh, a liturgical language like uh, Latin or Gies, as I mentioned before. Um, so it was used in um, Jewish religious ceremonies, uh, but then kind of as a product of um, the creation of the modern state of Israel. Uh, Jewish people came from all over the world to live in Israel, and they kind of settled on um, a rejuvenated form of Hebrew as the language that they'd speak um, as kind of the national language. So as you might be aware, uh, a lot of Jews from um, Europe uh, spoke Yiddish, which is kind of a related, um, a language closely related to um, German, uh, but that language sort of as a downside of this is not spoken quite as much anymore because those um, speakers when they moved to Israel um, started acquiring Hebrew uh, and now Hebrew is uh, the dominant language um, in the Israeli world. Uh, so uh, Latin, <coughs> Latin is a language which kind of keeps um, living on and um, one of the things that uh, the uh, religious establishment in the Vatican has to do is to kind of keep um, uh, adding um, terms and new words to it to sort of help it keep pace with the modern world. Um, another example uh, is an Australian language named Darug. Uh, so this, is, I believe, is the language that was spoken in the Sydney area before European settlers arrived. I've got this, um, yeah, I've got this link to a news article about this from about 10 years ago. Uh, and people are speaking this language. Um, more often, even though it um, had kind of faded out for a while. And as well, um, there's lots of work on Celtic languages that I mentioned before, um, like Welsh or Scots Gaelic, Manx, and even Cornish. Uh, and I, so Manx is spoken on the Isle of Man, Welsh and Wales, Scots Gaelic in Scotland, and Corn, Cornish traditionally in Cornwall. Uh, and there's actually a Cornish language website, which you can check out if you want. I don't speak Cornish at all, um, but it's back uh, after 200 years or so, uh, languages can be resurrected. Uh, and with that, I'm going to end the lecture for now. Hopefully this isn't too long and hopefully I'll be able to post it with no difficulty. Uh, I'm not going to send you a message about all the uh, remaining work you have to do, but that's it for now. This has been an unusual sort of way to teach to a one. Um, I hope it's been uh, rewarding for you. It would have been more fun to do this all in the classroom, but maybe next time. Okay, that's it. <laughs>